Yeah, pistol is going live here right now. So nades right away there towards uh, CT connector into um, a pass uh, mid area. And we're going to get the trip. They're just going to go straight up here. The conga line over uh, Sean Guerra's head. He's going to let his teammates just go straight up short. And he's going to just go for that play into a main. And uh, Liquid looking to get a defense here. These nades are looking quite good. We have the A retake there from them as they come in. And in fact, because Cloud9 are not being super fast onto the site, they're being delayed by grenades. They can't get in, get past the crossfire. So that worked out super well for Team Liquids. Yeah, and kind of a standard pistol round there from Cloud9. We see that from a lot of teams. We're just boops, uh, four people, and you just run on that like railing in the middle, mm. so you can get up short really quickly. But Liquid knows how to handle it. The, the way you handle it is just get a crossfire between uh, the truck on A and the car. So, yeah, the forklift and the car. Okay, so... And the bomb going alone towards B. I wonder if they're going to try to do some sneaky plant play. This is like that. That's uh, kind of the matchmaking classic. It's like, guys, go rush A. I've got the bomb. But I'm going B. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going B, guys. The, the thing is, they actually showed the bomb. So, okay, now they're dropping it. Okay. Because that's a thing some teams do. Like, they show the bomb just to force a quick rotation. And they try to make a play on that rotation. Right, right. Deep position the... Yeah, because they know, like, okay, ma we maybe we're not uh, are not able to win the round. We can do something else with it. Just get some kills or something. Okay, so they are just playing it chill at the moment. A lot of Z's or Z's in Nitro's name there. I think he's got maybe has issues with his keyboard. But uh, right now, Liquid's playing reactively, and. Uh, Soon. Yeah. Oh, this is great, actually. I love this. The uh, Molotov, uh, the headshot position, which is really cool. We've seen smokes which go onto the bomb site, which mean that the guy who's having the headshot only his legs are exposed, which is really, really strong as well. But this just straight up forces him to move or he dies. And then goes Cloud9 with that push. They, they've got some good damage behind this. The small, uh, the small in, in investment actually has paid off for them. And three frags. No bomb plant, but three kills is absolutely awesome. There. We'll be forced to full eco this round though, so... And this is a really tough position of Cloud9 because you want to buy those P250s because you know you're already pressuring Liquid's economy so much, but you still want the nades for this yeah, next round, yeah. so... It's like... The P250s now means kind of you should really go for Galil's next round. Yeah, At exactly. least mostly Galil's to yeah. get the nades, yeah. And it actually might be worth it. If you get two kills now, like, it's, it's worth it. Okay, so threat says two kills. Can Liquids deliver a clean round to deny Cloud9 just that? Well, again, uh, there's no need for big mid presence here from Liquid in a round like this. So they just have one man with the spot. They've got better defenses on the bomb sites themselves, which is very smart as the. the uh, they really want not to allow a bomb to go down. Cloud9 suffering some pre-nade damage coming in from Team Liquid as they ready to execute and it's time to go in to the A bomb site here for Cloud9. Nades coming in now. Freak's looking to open the door and try to rock this P250 straight into an opening. He's going to pick up the entry as well. There's number two from Sean Gares and Cloud9 get another kill. They might just straight up win this round with nothing but a few P250s as it comes down to a bomb plant and two players for Liquid on the retake. Now, Flosik going to go in here with Liege. Trying to corner, find the first player, but Skadoodle's going to drop Flosik with the Glock and everything. And he's going to be looking for Skadoodle. He's just going to play the Ring Around the Roses in there on the quad stack. And it's going to be a Liege now down to 25 HP. And he's going to get caught by Sean Gares. That is ridiculous. What a sick round there from Cloud9. Just showing you how powerful a couple fast entries can really be. Yeah, um, what's better than two kills? Winning the round. Winning the round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> picking up two, uh, two rifles. Yeah. <laughs> Only investing in three P250s. That's just crazy. And they, they just went for a simple A push. That's, that's, that's all you can analyze, really. Yeah. <laughs> they went for an A push. And they won the round. Yeah, just some great shots there. Like, everybody has played with a good team in this game. Knows that the pistols are so dangerous. And a diggle, Dan. And fugly. 
Yeah, so uh, got to see if he can win some good jewels with that. Now, Chowd is just checking over the top here. And this is a really safe position as well, because if you do die, the weapon's not recoverable. That's that's actually a really big deal. It's like the one of the very few spots where you can send a guy alone on an anti-eco, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, yeah, just very passive play from Cloud9. Cloud to going for the A-push. Nice dink there by Nitro. And now he's going to go in. So they're going to try the A take again after a lot of time has uh, been wasted. They've got a couple kills on the board as well. And Liquid still got a couple of deeks in play. So you never know from this position. From Forklift, you can actually do some ridiculous stuff. Now, if Fugly can catch them on the side. Oh, there's the first snap onto nothing. Goes for the second one, doesn't get it. But still, Flowsick can keep the dream alive. The Juan Deeg dream is now dead as he picks up an AK 47. And Flowsick looks for a quick frag. And he's actually wise to that potential jump spot. And he is looking for a frag. And he's going to spot the first one. Skadoodle, I'm not sure what he was what he looking actually, but. Um, was Skadoodle, Skadoodle looking at Car? I think he was. Yeah, the thing is, uh, they had one guy jumping the red container. Mm. So they thought he would have like full control yeah, of A main. So but he just sneaked out just before he started to jump. So gotcha. Yeah. Your eye is keen. So yeah, first real weapon round here. Let's see if Cloud now goes for like a fast boost here, or if they just want to go for a more passive play. I'm now going to call you Threat the Vigilance because you 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 spotted that. So good job. I'm going. I, I like that they're going for the A push without the telegraph, with throwing the smokes over, just walking out. I think that's a lot better. Oh, look at, yeah, this is, they should win the round if they're this far out, actually. Oh, but that flash is perfect. Nitro picks up a double. Make that three in a row from Nitro at the back of court. Goes for the bot flash there to keep himself safe as well. And boom, liquid just like that with one flash and a peek. That, that must be some kind of anti-strat because, okay, he, he hides behind the box yep. on, on A site. Yep. They had no information. I don't think they had any information at all. And they flash like defensive forklift flash like 15 seconds into the round like anticipating that cloud nine would have actually walked out a main that early in the round as right, well right. they must have like checked a demo or something because yeah, yeah. that makes no sense whatsoever and actually liquids this is actually part of the thing as well liquid um had an advantage into this grand final in the sense that they played the first best of three so they actually had the opportunity if they were suspecting the drops, and they should know Cloud9 well enough, and Cloud9 know them well enough to maybe have a good prediction on the drops. So they're guys, let's check some demos. They actually had the time to do that. So that, that could very well have been the case, and that, that's uh, that's pretty awesome, because that, yeah. that, was, that run was for free with that play. So excellent stuff by Team Liquid, absolutely phenomenal. And they're gonna go for the run boost here, and Nitro's gonna nail it with the help of Fugly. It's, fu it's funny oh. how, like, uh, the first time I saw that, it's like, oh, that's really cool, really tricky. But it's like, it's almost, you cannot fail when you do it. Mm. Like, it's some kind of bug where you, like, get, you just run and you get, like, a yeah, boost or boost. something. Yeah, it's really weird. Did you know that the, that position Nitro's in is you can wallbang that? Did you, did you yeah, know yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's crazy. I learned that very recently. I saw a video from one of the Japanese players from Southeast Asia, Shoshi. He's got this uh, YouTube channel and he's, he's pretty damn good at the game. Um, but he shows that wall bang, and uh, I've seen teams get completely wrecked by that on A pushes. So I think we'll start to see that B wall bangs a lot more in the future because it's pretty damn strong. And all oh, that double peek there. I don't often see that ang actually like both players playing on the site with no info and double peeking that angle. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, the, the bad thing about having a, a double angle there on B site is if one guy runs past, he knows that both the B players are on the B site right away, so mm. gives away a lot of information. And now we're going to see how much damage Nitro can do. They are not looking because he's got a silencer on his M4, and that's so smart. He drops out of the position as well, so that they might not suspect that he was there to keep the surprise, allow him to use that position again in the future, and they will clean up the round. So I like that actually. It's yeah. pretty pretty cool. But uh, I'd, I'm always surprised when nobody checks the spot. I know that you have a lot of angles to check, but even when we see the T's smoke everything off. You, see, you still see lots of teams not even checking that spot, e even to this day. Yeah. It, I, I've, I think uh, it's been much rarer in Europe. People always are looking for it before the entry, just like in, in the picking phase of the round, they're looking for that. But, uh, it's, but yeah. it's usual because like, when you push out, 
like a lot of times a lot of players are flashed or something and one guy is run out he's flashed and the guys behind him think he have checked that corner so is it like yeah it's just get to a really weird situation and we had a lot of trades going into these stories there so the uh, the push did not work out liquid losing all the players and sean gares on the lurk on the lurk creeping like apparently as james would say like me in the club so thanks james <laughs> for saying that all the time but uh Adrenaline always going to be working around the smoke here. Going to find the first player gets the kill just about, but he's got to be careful. Low on bullets might just get peaked. Oh my god, Skadoodle doesn't see him so close. Adren turns it into a one-on-one -on -one out of nowhere. Going to be tossing down the incendiary. That's going to allow him to eliminate positions. Oh, and he finds... Oh no! He couldn't get the kill onto Freakazoid, but still, there is time. There is... He already has a kit. And there's the next peak. Oh my goodness, he doesn't get it. Freakazoid, he gets a single tag on him, and he goes down to 7 HP. That round, Edren had it in the one-on-one. -on -one. He, he played it perfectly. He got the incendiary out. He then knew the angle that Afrikozoi was most likely to peak, and he just couldn't get the spray. That is very unfortunate. Edren's going to feel pretty gutted there, I think. Yeah, very back and forth. Cloud9, should I won that round easy, like way more easily there, uh, having that 1v3. And then Adrian should have won that 1v1, so it was mm. really back and forth. Okay, so 4 versus... Sorry, 4 two, 3 rather. <laughs> as the drone spots one player over the top. And he's just going to back away now. And, uh, oh wow, the Sean Gares with the, just the crab walk. I think he thought that they were going to have an eco. Actually, you see two pistols, but they managed to buy one up. Stuff coming in and Freakazoid in a forward position. Nitro going to move in quickly, gets himself an AK in hand. And he does have full armor as well as Shroud moves in for the entries. And things not looking too shabby at the moment here for Cloud9. Despite being a man down, they got positioning, they got guns. But so do Liquid at the moment. And it's a one on two for Shroud. The man with the mechanics. And Shroud would just want to disappear from the site with this low HP. I don't think the light is going to let him. Yeah, we've got uh, Alicia on the car angle at the moment. Shroud playing the patient game, got, has time to work with. And the bomb on his back, but Elijah's w watching the spot there in case the double back did happen. Now Shroud is going to plant the bomb just barely, get into a safe angle, but it's going to come down to the first bullet. In goes Leash, he's going to get it, and Shroud cannot connect the insta headshot. And so we'll get another round for Liquid. However, they lost everyone but one person. Let's quickly go uh, do a money check. And. Uh, yeah, they since they both like one C uh, said and one five seven, they are gonna be completely money screwed if they lose this round. All right, so uh, yeah, it's definitely potentially a very worrying situation as we can see for Liquid. Not a lot of money to buy, so you would expect Cloud9 to if they were reading the money. This I think this is a spot where you always force it. As you, I think you just said that actually. Yeah. Yeah. But the Cloud9. Going for that eco. Alrighty. So not going to go for the deagle. full force. Hey, Deegs on Shroud. Yeah, they should know that they could have Thanos and stuff as well. They really should have force this round. Yeah. Alright, well, let's see what they can get done. They, they've done more with less. And this lo looks like it's going pretty well. Just P250s are the answer for Cloud9. Going to get a bomb plant, two frags, pick up the weapons. And they even had, I think, uh, they picked up the smoke from the CT bodies, so they've got some smokes to play, some, some nades, some flashes. All the nades are gone though, and Adren is up top with the AWP, looking for the peak now. Spot one player, but this angle is always going to be hard for the AWPer. You can get the frags coming in the trade all really fast, nothing now. He's got P250 back out, going to go for the reload, and spots Adren, so he knows the position, he hears the sounds, he spots him perfectly, aim punch, oh, and the pre-fire, just spamming him before he comes around the corner, perfect play from nothing. And the AWP just disappeared. <laughs> It happens, man. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Don't leave an op on the ground. Who knows what can happen to the op? I guess it must have, must, it must have been a nature or something. It must have been. But it, it, th that guy had the op, the guy he killed. So he must have like shot it in the air when he dropped it, when he died or something. I, I think he had an op as well, uh, at least. Okay, I, d I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure, actually. I would have to go back and check that. Okay. So we got uh, five to four as Liquids are now on the eco. So Cloud9 have done it, basically. And in fact, they did it in a round where we thought they, we, we felt like okay, they should force it because the economy of Liquid is so bad. They did it again with with a uh, pretty limited buys. So Cloud9 playing a bit more efficiently than we would. Right. Yes. <laughs>
probably. And uh, Team Liquid going for the almost full eco. A few pistols, but trying to stack the B site. They, they have to stack with this little weaponry. So far, Cloud9 playing that uh, passive play again, just want to be super safe. They got Skrull out on the uh, on the boost first of all, and then they got the second player towards the vent, so they're just being methodical. And now they got that combined effort into the B split. So good, good uh, methodical round here from Cloud9. Not really leaving themselves open for the nade. Ooh, the nade's rain in. This is not looking too good here for Team Liquid. They're not going to get much done here with their pistols. And Cloud9 are going to go to 5-5. What do you want to see from Liquid on their fullback? I want them to fall back more to a 1-3-1 uh, setup where they are like, like three people in mid. Maybe go for the like instant boost if the terrorist push pushes A and try to flank them. And just keep control of mid. Because if you have mid, you can just rotate so much quickly to both sides. Like if they go B, you can just go straight through the vents. If, if they go A, you have, can just go towards the castle, so... And, and the opposite as well, like, the, you avoid that situation where the, the T's can quickly go through the vents. Because if that happens, the guys, that's a bomb plant. Yeah. That, it, that should always be a bomb plant, basically, because they flood in so quickly from two angles, and the, to the, the distance to the site is so fast that the CTs can't do much. If the nays are proper from the T's... So, I, I mean, I know, I know when I've been playing, of course I'm not playing pro-level Counter-Strike, but I mean you have, but, but I know that that situation for me always feels horrible if I'm on the CT, and mid is given up in that way. Yeah. It's really scary. Yeah, it just gives terrorists a lot of options. It's the same like the pop ladder on train, where you can just, you can run straight to events and go to B, and, or you can just run store straight to mm. A from short, so... You never want to give the terrorists an option where they can rotate between the sites quickly. Okay, so, uh, one thing I've seen actually teams starting to do like a while ago, it's not super common. I think Virtus Pro did it first, I think the dice floor. Um, we'll have to hold that for actually. We do have a boost and the drone has actually made his way into into the, uh, the mid or the T main area. And... Only gonna, he's actually going to hear some running around here, so good information. Adren's going to go in here, come on, get snap it, onto nothing, takes him down. Second play gets the trade as Sean Gares opens up B as well. And uh, just two left here for Liquid. But I've got to say, like one play that I think is quite cool, that again, I, I've, I've not seen anyone really use it all that much. I think I first saw it from Virtus Pro, is uh, going for the pressure, like taking mid with a wall of smokes, going for the pressure into B. And then um, if, if you don't get a fast frag, within like the first five seconds, instead of forcing it, rotate everyone that you can out of the vent, like boost everyone into the vents, into mid, to catch the rotation that the CTs are already doing. And that's insanely scary, because they're running around in mid exposed, and like, oh my god, there's three Ts in middle now, what? Yeah, they should yeah be that, that, that's actually very, very smart, because the way the CTs usually defend the B, push, B splits now, is ju just like flashing out high and low ramp on B and just running through the smokes. Mm. And it's basically impossible for the terrorists to push up the site. But what Virtus is probably thinking there is like, okay, if they're pushing through the smokes, they're really dedicated to B, which means their like rotations to A is like way off. So if we just boost through the vents, we will be at A like a lot quicker than yeah. they will be. So. And, and you always like leave a guy in, in yeah. B storage area as well. So always like the, the lurk threat is there. On like a fast paced round, that gives you so many options as a T's to always double back as well. It's like really sick. But I mean, that's that's like really hard stuff to coordinate. Like you need so much experience and uh, drills to do that. But we are back into the next uh, round now. Now we have buys for both teams. It's uh, Cloud9 taking the lead six to five and Dren is on the AWP. Now he's uh, gonna smoke this off, go for the peak and the smoke will bloom. And uh, he's got the angle towards the outside area of B storage, toxic area. So far, it's the split and pick start from Cloud9. So what are you looking for with, the, with this kind of an opening? Yeah, it's in interesting to see that they have an op in the vent room and they have a game <laughs> Oh as well. my god. I'm not sure what Sean Gaz was... I guess he's looking for maybe someone pushing in, but still... I mean, I, I guess he just... they played their standard round. I don't think he knew that he had an op there, so... Mm. Most teams usually have two guys towards the in the beginning, towards that uh, toxic area, yeah. just to push some pressure on. Good shot by 
by Dren, absolutely. You can, a single player can get so much done in B-Storage sometimes as well, so it's like really nice to take out the kind of dedicated B-Storage pressure player in Sean Gares in that round. Like again, I always bring him up, but Get Right I think is maybe the best at just causing havoc by himself on D-Storage. Because suddenly if you can get into checkers, it's so scary just by yourself. Um, anyway, we have Cloud9 moving in for a B-Pressure, and they do have the players stuck on the bomb site as well, but there's two players there. What will we'll help out? Oh, that's a nice little... Uh, Cut a frag onto nothing, from nothing there onto a leash. He was by headshot. That's so key to get that headshot player dead straight away. And uh, two on three here, scheduled down to three HP. And then he got tagged through the uh, through the wall actually, through the metal shutter. It's a good knowledge of the map here by Cloud9. They're going to go for a crossfire setup. Actually, no, they're just going to go straight in. This is actually a nice gamble here from Cloud9. This is so, so cool. Both players actually up top, and Freakazoid is going to spot one. Now he's going to look and cover his teammates back, and it's going to be Skadoodle who turns around and makes the frag. Gray comes in from Skadoodle, but he won't make it happen. And uh, that was a crazy afterplant. And it's actually going to pay off. They don't have time. They don't actually have time. They don't have... Did they not have a kit in that spot when they were on the site? Maybe I, they I, I didn't oh, have the kit, but... Uh, he wasn't close to the bomb. Maybe like he god thought damn. Nitro was diffusing. How nine made it happen? Oh my god! What did you think of that post plant setup? Because they 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 made the gamble to move in both into into uh, into the CT. Yeah, they, they had there. they had to make a ga make a gamble. Like yeah, uh, one, the, one of them had six cool. HP. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a team try that actually before. So that's really nice by Cloud9. They're gonna go seven to five because of that, and they're gonna going to put. Let's uh, check the money game real quick. Uh, so you can see that they are forcing Team Liquid to an eco if if they win this one. So Cloud9 are positioned really well in this round. They got four Molotovs as well, and they got a fast play into mid, also straight into the vent. Are, are they doing it again? Just fast B split play. It's like it. They got the uh, fire for the back box. It's really smart to uh, to actually spend the money for that. So we're gonna have a liege though. Why the uh into the B-bomb site, able to pick up one frag, but the trades are coming in for the T's. Three on three, bomb needs to go down, and it should. It's on the bomb site at the moment. I think we're gonna get uh, an, a relatively open-ish plant, maybe for checkers, I think that was, as uh, Cloud9 have a good advantage here in this post plant. Will Sean check the flank though? That is the danger. Oh, he will check, and Nitro will die. Fugly and... Adren looking to go through. Adren on the AWP, but that spray down the flashes looking so good, and Adren will be sent packing. But uh, he's not going to be able to take that up to safety. Skadoodle will take it out of his hands, and Cloud9 will force uh, a situation where Liquid don't have a lot to work with. Not They, they have to buy, I guess, in a spot like this. Uh, I, I, they will buy so they can full buy next round, but no, they will just go for a straight up full buy. I mean, it's it's a hard choice. I mean, yeah. T cash is still cash is such an open map. It's like playstyle versus playstyle. Like on, in some matches, T is a lot easier. In some other matches, you can just do a complete lockdown of CT. Really depends on the playstyle. I didn't realize actually that so many rounds have been run in a row here by Cloud9 actually, so they've got a big bonus to work with as well. So I kind of miscalculated there, but they are going to have a fast play to deal with into A main. Like just open picks here found by Cloud9. They take two players down immediately, and Cloud9 now looking to take full control of this A bomb site. Slowly but surely, Skadoodle's going to work into these positions. Oh, that Molotov is going to be problematic here for a trend. He's going to go for the peak as uh, they're finally trying to Molotov MBK. I think they. The, the corner behind Squeaky there. I'm not sure if they actually got the Molotov on that position. Uh, some teams love to just smoke it off. But uh, still, Adren is actually alive at the back of the site. This is causing issues. They're too slow into the A bomb site right now. And in comes the rotation. And they are going to clean house on the A bomb site. Great stuff there from Liquid. But you got to. It just seemed like they they couldn't remove the player from quad quickly enough. He, yeah. he actually slowed that down way too much. Yeah, exactly. But it's almost in that position when it takes too long that you have to fall back. Because they're gonna... you know that they're gonna be like three or four people there at least, so... They play that round way too passively. It, it, there's such fast kills as well, so... Yeah, so inter interesting spots. And that's gonna, that's gonna keep Liquid uh, back in this one, because of course they, they were gonna... Again, be on terrible money. That's like that horrible spot where they kind of have to buy again and have to buy again and just always have terrible buys. But last round of the first half, Cloud9 with eight rounds on the T side. So for Cloud9, that's actually a great start, especially considering that Liquid picked this map. So I'm sure they would have expected to get a stronger CT start. But uh, it's going to be a strong guess going over for that B pressure. But it will be at least without plays in there in this instance. 
Yeah, Sean hasn't gotten a lot down there no. towards B. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. They, um, but, well, they have nothing to do something in mid. And with that pick onto Adren, that's that's so scary now because they've got two players towards B. They're going to rotate one to uh, make sure that CT is kind of covered, that no one can come through the connector now, that nothing has opened up mid for his team. But they can do anything right now. Liquid can see, can't see anything. Yeah, the bomb actually going towards B and a lonely player there deep into the B site. Playing that safe angle, just trying to go for the information. Now, Fosik, he's got to delay and he's got to get a kill here. That's the job he's got to do. Gets the kill, bomb down, and you get a second one. He gets traded on. So fast trade here, and with the nades here, that, that in the uh, Molotov, that's really awesome. That should allow the bomb to go down. That simple delay It's going to get Cloud9 that planting opportunity. Ooh, but the incendiary. Oh no, it's going to burn away. Shroud, and the bomb will not be planted. That leads Skadoodle for the clutch with the AK. Going to spray down Nitro, and it's going to just... They're going to run out of time. What a crazy, crazy last round there. And I, I like that he went for the safe plant, or the safer plant, instead of the standard plant behind the smaller box. But if he would have went for the smaller box plant, he wouldn't yeah. get burned alive. And so. That's crazy, because it's just really smart by Liquid to like place that incendiary, because every time I would plant safe there as well. I, yeah. mean, I think like most people would in that spot. Yeah, because but, 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 but the funny thing is, like the, the right next to the small box is like almost as safe, because you can't get spotted from high or lower, like anyways. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. easy for us to say this. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely a good consideration. But, I mean, people... It's, it's one of those, those kind of, like... It's the default safe spot. Yeah, so exactly. You have to, like... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you kind yeah. of automatically just... I must plant here. Yeah, this is the most hidden place. Yeah, it feels like it's the yeah. safest, yeah. It's actually funny because behind the small box, you're actually hidden from the headshot position as well. So it's actually even more safe. Mm. Plus, you can see the bomb from the vent room. So I think they had checkers as well. Yeah, exactly. So Th that's, that's the big risk with that plant. Is yeah, checkers. If the CGs just jump off the vent, they can kill you. But uh, if, they ha if you have checkers as T, that, that plant is actually like more safe. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I imagine Shadow's was rather surprised when he found that he was on fire. Yeah, exactly. I actually m he might have actually predicted that the Molotov was going for the standard plant instead of the safe plant. Mm. Those mind games. That's, yeah. that's the that's the crazy the crazy thing actually, and that's one of the awesome things about just in general Molotovs in this game because there it just it does add a cool dynamic. This, I think I think potentially it it could break certain older maps. Like I always wondered how Tuscan really would be on like the the A bomb site with the Molotovs. You got all the crates and stuff. I, I can yeah. just imagine all the like set Molotovs you could do to just completely. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I haven't yeah. thought about that. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> like you can't stand on site. Yeah, you can't like stand anywhere. because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's perfect for Molotovs. It's cr it's actually kind of nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they they actually updated us and they fixed it. I think a little bit. Uh, anyway, um, Liquid Seven, Cloud Nine Eight. That's uh, do okay. We're into this uh, this pistol round. Now. Oh wow, my goodness, that is a long range shot there from nothing. And uh, they are playing not necessarily the A retake specifically, but kind of players all over the place if Cloud9 is to deal with the one pop and should be looking to find more. They haven't dealt with him, so Cloud9 with a very, very good round so far. Bomb down in middle. That is huge. Skadoodle's still alive by forklift. And Liquid not able to get anything done in their pistol round. And Cloud9 will be very happy with that. An old plant probably gonna mean Liquid is gonna go for the Tech 9 armor. Or they should at least. The, the thing is, is that if they don't do it, then it's so obvious that they're gonna do the Galil Force in the next round. Exactly. And, that, and that's yeah. like the, that's the weird thing with it, because um, you can't really, you can't really surprise by that, yeah. that because you just can't. Yeah, it's hard to fake that you have techs. <laughs> yeah, it's like. <laughs> Look at this clock. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's the thing because used it usually. I mean, it used to be a spot like that, but of course, maybe if one guy buys a tech and he buys yeah. a, lot of, a lot of decoys, because <laughs> like in one point six it would be like you'd have a Glock round and then yeah. maybe another Glock round. But in this game, it doesn't work like that. You, you can't you can't have like the Glock round and instead of the other Glock round, it's like oh, we have to go up the surprise buy. In this round, if you're not going to do that, you have to, you have to. Uh, well, but, it, but it's just obvious. Yeah. So we do have the Tech 9 armor bike going into a Freakazoid, uh, able to get a couple of headshots with the last few bullets. And that is going to be a lot of money in the bank. 
1200 for him as Skidoo and Sean Gaz finish off these players. Two players are dead actually. Um, but luckily for Freakazoid, you know, he did get a couple with the with the MP7. So that's gonna again, you know, help him help him out considering that uh, he did go down. So you can see he's actually got the most money in his team. So he can actually have a good buy here. Full names with a uh, Famous and the kit if he really wants to. Or he's actually gonna re go rebuy for the MP7. I wonder if the MP9 would have been better in this spot because it's cheaper and it's better in close combat. and it's good yeah, yeah it's really good in close and the up against glocks and then in the next round you yeah. want to get rid of it anyway for the AKs yeah I agree I, th I still think they were re really happy though I mean sure they mm. lost three players but versus tech 9 armor on this map you just if you just win the round you're yeah happy. you're happy yeah. <laughs> true and Freakazoid is ready to make the bank turns out this uh, MP7 is going to pay off massively because they are gonna he's gonna have the extra bullets the MP9 does not have to get all the money he does go down again, but he's, he made $1,800 in this round with that MP7. And, uh, what is behind door number one? Well, nothing anymore. That's going to be 11 to 7. As Cloud9 pick up the round, and we can see Freakazoid on 6k. So it's, it's, just quite, it's quite impressive how effective the SMGs can be if they manage to go to your site. I actually th it's actually quite interesting, because if they hadn't gone to his site, wouldn't, and he wouldn't have made any money, but would have survived, he, he still is in a situation where he should be on saving like keeping the mp7 and in, against the ak galil it could be a, a problem um yeah. i wonder what liquid will do now seems like you're just going for a passive there's no one in a at the start of the rounds i think oh, okay sean gez was late out of spawn i think i think that's what was why i think they were going for the one three one early but sean gez was just late out of spawn which is uh not not yeah. ideal in the grand final yeah, extremely passive play here from Liquid. I think they boosted one guy there, and he's just gonna wait for the two smokes in mid to fade, and then he can just see if someone's close to the left. It's a really common play now, because a lot of people just smoke off mid, and they put a guy like almost in the smoke there, mm. close in mid, and you just want to wait out the smoke. And usually, you can like catch him off guard as the smoke fades, as he's trying to like rotate to the vent. That's actually really cool. That is very insightful, and. We've got three players towards B there for Cloud9. Not having any mid control means that they're kind of thinking about gambling here. And they're going to try to make an information play into A main to find out what's going on. So now they can they could actually send their third player who's in the mid just like into B right now because they've eliminated what's going to go, uh, going to go here for uh, these key players. But the spray down is absolutely legendary there. Shroud and nothing. Able to get a few frags on the board. Three for Shroud. And Adren is trying to get some vengeance. And he's... Gonna find it onto Shroud, but inevitably he will fall. Yeah, Three players surviving. Um, that's what you talked about earlier. Like, if you go for the B split and you don't get an entry kill, it's almost impossible Actually, yeah, to it's get. Really yeah, really yeah. Because you so like sure, even if they would have gotten like Shroud there and then Shroud would have only gotten two kills, the rotation was already there, mm. so it doesn't really matter that much. This is like where we're talking about the impact potential from the B storage player player because sometimes. It's going to be like a. It's actually going to be a one on one because if it's like a one three one, you can actually get the one on one. And if you can get a four position, even, then you also pressure the vent player, or your team can try to, whilst taking mid, molotov into the vents to force the vent player down into B storage, and the B guy can have an angle to kill him. Or there's lots of like play you can do to actually just get a kill there um, as the B storage player. So we didn't see much impact from Cloud9. I think uh, Sean Gares was the their B storage player. Um, but yeah, that position is really interesting. How you can outsmart the CT defender that you're usually up against and I love that dynamic actually but we're going to see the pistols going to go in here they just brought up a few uh, careful so they can get themselves a, a buy on the next round still and they're actually going to make a couple entries into the B bomb site will they get the bomb down there we got a Molotov or an incendiary there and will that by the way oh okay so that's for the the box you're talking about and uh, that's the mix up we were talking about as well oh he yeah, backs away into yeah. the flames in the end, I think. And it's going to be the round for Cloud9. The bomb went down, though, for Liquid. So let's quickly check their cash. So, okay, with four in a loss in a row, that's 2,900 plus the 800. So 3,700 there for them. Yeah. Getting all math on this. Getting and all it's... Uh, all, all the math. I actually Maths. read a Reddit thread on the Cisco Reddit that there's someone who actually figured out how the like cone of fire actually works. Oh. So it's, it's only grows in the direction you throw it in. Like, even if you bounce it so it bounces back, it will oh. still grow in the original oh, direction okay. you threw it wow. in. Okay. So, like, he could have actually predicted that that wouldn't grow towards him. 
that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, hello. Look at this. Oh. I don't think I've you anyone anything like that before. Didn't work. And it, it cost Shroud his life. That's actually kind of a big deal. Early into this round. But they have three players towards A, do Cloudmine. So they still have a... I mean, it could actually end up helping them by encouraging Team Liquid into the A-bomb site. Now, it's an early pick though, so they don't have, they can they can force problems for Cloud9 by just saying, hey, you got four players. You have to defend B and A, and maybe you want presence on mid as well. If we split you up, we can attack you later into the rounds with more numbers. And it looks like that's what they're going for with the, the mid mid angle here. So it mid is usually for free when you get an early pick, because they've got to split onto the sites. And uh, that's what we see at the moment. So they are taking their free middle. And they're using it for an A-wrap, for an A-split, up short and into it. This is actually a really good play coming in from Team Liquid right now. Cloud9, though, they've got the Skadonglas over by Carr, and he's going to be looking for those multiple frags with the AWP. There was no smoke for Carr, and that's actually cost Liquid massively here so far. But they will still pick up the kills. Fugly and Adren taking the, the frags, and Adren besting Skadoodle in the Yacht battle in this occasion. And Sean Gares tries to fight to stay alive. Oh, that is <laughs> Oh, he doesn't actually get the kill either. That's so sad. So like, if I'm going to die, at least I'm going to use everything to take you down. But And there's even flames on his body as well. So flames all over the place. But 13 to 8, Cloud9 looking good. Got a good economy despite losing that round. Um, Liquid are going to have to spend a huge amount of cash to buy up here. And uh, all back onto... Sorry, uh, I ring still had an op, sorry, but uh, all the nades back onto these players as well. That's about a grand each as also. So big buy for Liquid. Uh, they're going for the almost full Molotov setup as well. Nades over the top here from Freakazoid onto the boost. That's actually really hard to nade properly. It's surprisingly hard with the nades and the HEs in this game. Yes, it always goes too far. Now let's see if they can catch on off guard there with the boost on the B side. Oh yes, nothing will get it onto Flow Sick. So again, and, and again, we, you know, just highlighting the importance of the damage that that player can do. And oh my goodness, Shroud is going to get the the kind of pressure player from from the squeaky area as well. Dren gets a return onto Freakazoid, but they're playing still from a player behind, as the play is going to try to finish onto the A bomb site. In come the grenades, and we've got two players directly there. Shroud close range, and Skadoodle right behind him as well. So they can trade pretty effectively here. There's the spray down, and if he needed help, Shroud is right there, but Fugly goes to the top. I feel sorry for Shroud, because he just sits out there, and, <laughs> all he, and he's the one that gets exploited, and not Skadoodle. But uh, Cloud9, 14, Liquid, 8. So that's a really, really crucial round for Cloud9 to win. Now resetting the bonus, and Liquid having to spend everything to keep themselves alive in this one. Yeah, interesting to see how they handle the situation with having two Tech Knights. Going towards A, maybe we're just gonna see a simple A execute here. Yes, yeah, looks like. Yeah. Now, I've seen uh, multiple variations from this. Either the highly telegraphed execute and just go for the execute, or the uh, using using it to actually wrap, like go, then going for a boost over A, then kind of having the delayed execute with a, an A split, or just faking and going to B. Looks like they're just gonna go straight in right now. And Sean Guess, is he just gonna run through the smoke? He's actually just uh, playing still by MDK in the corner there. And Fugly will pick off his teammate. Sean Guess needs to get frags here, but he only gets, well, he actually gets nothing. And it's gonna be Skadoodle and nothing who pick up a couple kills, but he won't stop the bomb from going down. The numbers are even here for both sides. As Shroud will find an angle onto Elige. And it's Nitro at the back here with uh, Adren. Trying to try to save this. Oh, the one on one one by Nitro is Shroud and Skadoodle against this last player. 5 HP on Nitro as that bomb's ticking away. Can he actually pull this one off? Is a defuse coming in right now? They're both looking for him and they will have time to go for it. So pretty smart for them to, to not have one guy stuck on the bomb there, not leave it to the gamble of the one on one. Yeah, Sometimes teams do that and, it's, and I'm like, oh, no, please. <laughs> the, the most crucial part about that round was Cloud9 boosting as they saw the smokes coming over the roof there on A. This is a pretty standard thing in the meta right now, but it's so hard to deal with as uh, for the terrorists because you don't want to leave one guy holding the boost, but at the same time, if they do the boost, you just get flanked like right, after right. like five, ten seconds, so it's really hard to deal with. Was, again, you know, part of how you were talking about of having the pre-medic gives you the options. 
gives you a lot of options to uh, fast rotate and have uh, strong plays and CTs on reaction. And uh, Nitro looking for a quick pick, nice snap onto Freakazoid. That is the forklift player down, but Sean Gares is going to take one down of his own, but that's the trade, and that's not going to favor Cloud9 here. They are on game point in map one of the grand finals of the HGC Reborn Invitational Cup. And Liquid with a strong chance to take this one. But there is the one-on-one. -on -one. Nothing goes down to Fugly as he entries into the B-bomb site. So this should be one right now here for Liquid. They, they should save right away. Yeah, they're doing it. Just yeah. going to the CT spot. That looks like a kidney bean. That shape. A circle. It was not. A, that's not a circle. That's more of an oval. Please. The perfect circle. Okay. That's, I don't. I know. It's, I know it's late, but that is. Okay, I know your eyes may be tired. Perfect circle. Our observers amazing. <laughs> Looks like a pink circle to me. An attempt at a circle. That is a disgrace to all circles. Shroud is doing something. Oh, I just priming a flashbang. If they would push towards them. Isn't the perfect circle like a name of some popular like metal band or something? Circle, I, I don't know. I know not the answer to this question. And uh, even though they saved two weapons, they actually should consider equoing. Or I don't know, maybe it's 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 maybe buy this round and go for a double eco if they lose it. Okay. Yeah. If you because you have to do like. Okay, six rounds left. How do we get as many weapons, weapon rounds as possible? That's right, like right. the only thing you have to think about. And as you say, it's not really about the opponent's economy when you just need to win one round. And uh, we will get an F stack here onto A. This is kind of cool because this is like, um, basically, if they go A, we crush them. If they don't go A, we save the weapons. Uh, that's what you'd hope that they would do, at least. Not run and die to the, uh, to the bomb that's planted on B. But uh, Nitro is ready for Sean Gez, and he will take him down. So Skadoodle is uh, watching for a main. Now, Cloud9 have actually kind of betrayed the initial stack, and they spread out. So they, it looks like they didn't really want to stack purely, but just wanted to be class, uh, good against the class timing. But we have Freakazoid with a perfect peak timing on short. Oh my goodness, Cloud9, two against one, but Adren has the rifle advantage. Freakazoid and nothing without proper weapons oh, here. Oh, this is so smart. He saw that nowhere and came out connector. He can just rush to the vents. Just. Oh, I think the peak just came in. Skidoo, uh, sorry, three because I saw the vent get popped. And now Adren is playing against them. He hears the running. And now he's going to get ahead of them. Oh, yes. Yeah, this Beautiful play. Yeah, the, this was really, really nice. So Adren, it would would have been so awesome if he dared to go for the open plant as well towards middle. And <laughs> that would be very cool. He would have had time to do that. Yeah. But this is the cool thing. He's got the other really good plant, and he can do anything. Yeah, he'd like do the open plant and then run into a main, run all the way around to short. That would be amazing. <laughs> so, all right. So, but this is they they should be able to predict the position he's playing. They just have to attack it as two players. They've got rifles picked up now, despite not having any uh, any armor. And there's the peak now for Adren. No, I think he's going to win this now with just so little time left. Yeah, he's going to win this. And his aim punch as well is going to just annihilate them. Great play from Adren. So smart. Was that a 1 with 4, actually? I don't know, actually. Was it? A 1 with 3 at least. One because yeah, again, I think yeah. 1 with 3 at least. I'm not sure if it was 1 with 4, but, but yeah. 1 with 3, yeah, yeah, there we go. Awesome play, though. Definitely. Really good stuff by Adren. Yeah. If it only had planted towards mid. <laughs> yeah. Plan towards mid, then hide in quad, wait for the defuse, jump on top of the red, and knife them from above. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, um, um, it's, good. it's another good reason for you to be a caster. It's the same thing as going for the deagles, just for the, the highlights. Yeah, the highlights. For the highlights. We got a mid take. They're just a simple one, no wall of smoke, but the uh, aggressive, more aggressive smokes towards the short and towards the uh, CT connector. Oh my god, what is this? Some 420 DDoS? I don't know. That 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 lag there. <laughs> that is uh, pretty interesting. Close it gonna go in there, gonna find Sean Gares. And they will uh, slowly but surely be getting more and more map control as they just uh, clean out these positions. And just with the use of grenades, you can eliminate all the da most dangerous spots. And that's exactly what the Molotovs are for, and they're, they're doing that. So. 
be a pretty easy round here for Liquid. And in this position, buying two Deagles for seven hundred dollars. I don't like know. It. No. it doesn't really make sense. You need to win one round, so it's like get the buys out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. as I said, like just how do we like get yeah, as yeah, many yeah, buy yeah. rounds as possible? Yeah, this is one of those things like uh, we talk about. Like sometimes it's very important uh, to have simple, simple um, concepts in mind. Yeah. So th this is about getting this, this thing around. How is the best way to do that? Well, you know, say get the buys out. Or for example, there's lots of spots where you can pre-plan this kind of spot. Like if we're in this position where we have 15 rounds, what is what, what are our priorities? Like you can think about this before any match because you'll be in this situation in multiple matches against different opponents on different maps. So it's just like that concept, conceptual thing. And you can do that for different positions. Like if we get a pick here, then what do we do? Like pre yeah. pre-plan the thought process, and that that's like a really good thing, like good part of preparation that all teams should be doing. Yeah, exactly. And like it, people might think, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Just buy a deagle, and that's probably why we did buy that deagle. But if you consider, okay, they're probably gonna be f if they lose all the rounds, they might have like two ecos, which means they only need to lose like five rounds or like three weapon rounds, really, before it's tied. So oh, buying those deagles can really fight them now. He didn't hit any of those players, I don't think, not like to, uh, not to actually get a kill either, uh, kill even. And they're gonna actually storm into the site. It's gonna take a ridiculous play from the remainder of Cloudline to actually stop this. Liquid looking really good in this round. That peak was perfect from, from Skadoodle, but I don't know how he didn't even get one frag. Got uh, Liquid with that uh, bomb down, taken away. Nice shot there by Flosik, cleaned up by Adren. And if we can wow. see the mana now on Cloud9, they. Yeah, they shouldn't buy. They should. They shouldn't buy anything this round. Like not even. Uh, maybe like P to fifties. Shroud, you can. Shroud, you can drop a couple. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the deagle again. <laughs> <laughs> Threat says no to deagles. Every time you buy a deagle, yeah. a kid uh, dies. Like that's the one thousand four hundred dollars now because of the two deagles. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. An incons very inconsistent weapon in a spot where you can find consistency with, with your buy rounds. Um, so we will have the uh, mid take coming in from Liquid. Cloud9 close actually with a, a couple pistols looking for those headshots, and that's dangerous. And yeah, Freakazoid will get that headshot, the one bullet kill range with that 5 7. Elise will, will definitely be feeling the end of that at 5 7, but it's going to be Adren who does pick up the trade, which is very important as he makes his way into B. So Adren is controlling the situation here for his team as best he can. Look to get themselves in. Uh, Try actually just tapping in some deeks. Goes down, doesn't do much, all that much damage. Just a tag onto Fugly. And Liquid will get the bomb planted. Sean Gares has stolen away an AK from middle. From short, type, the short area, I do believe. And uh, that's nice. You can save that AK into the next round. Again, yeah. economic damage is not a priority. It is, it, there is, it's not on the list for Cloud9. The one round is on the list. If they were to allow Liquid to come back into this for an overtime, I'm pretty sure they would be displeased. Yeah, what was the score? 15-8? Yeah, we can check actually, just uh, hit this uh, hit the tab, hit tab here. So the four yeah, rounds eight. in a row. Yeah, so 15-8 indeed. It looked like a one game. Now Cloud9 is going for the smart choice and going for a pause. They don't know, they've been losing rounds, so they don't have the momentum, they have the buy-in coming. Now they get to decide how t how to use their money. And also, I think they're actually just going to go to the bathroom. For one minute. For one minute, exactly. And, uh, and discuss things on their phones. Yeah, hopefully. But, yeah, like if you look at Cloud9's money now, I mean, they can buy this round and probably the next one, but... They might not be able to afford like Molotovs, smokes and stuff for the next round, which they would have been if they would have gone for the full well, if we uh, If we bring up the scoreboard real quick, um, so they have the, the max bonus. So if they spend everything, let's say 5k, although we, I think I just saw an auto sniper, um, they're actually spending everything. So they won't have a anything left in the tank for some of these players. And if they lose, they get $3,400. So Sean Gares, is going to have, at best, a Famas, Kevlar, and nades next round, and a couple of nades. So that's definitely not ideal. And as you say, like you know, with some of these rounds, if they hadn't invested, 
some of the digs because you're kind of you're kind of playing the inconsistencies like are we kind of like kind of are we just squeezed out around kind of randomly there instead of playing for the well we have our buy rounds our setups from what they're doing with our proper setups we can try to adjust like this and you can actually make a round for yourself as opposed to just saying well we hit this shot because it you should know it should never it, your thought process should never be if I hit this shot. That should that that should never happen because that's basically like the gambler's mentality of, well, if I get you know if I if I get the uh, if I get the ace on the, the the river or something that I need to complete my my straight, then that means it's worth it to just shove all of my stack and just potentially get knocked out of the tournament even though it's yeah, only, exactly. like, I only have one draw or something like it's like but if, but if but if I do it, then I win. <laughs> you, you know that's like the, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean like I that, I that kind that's of ex exactly the, yeah. the the thing. What's going on here? And let's just see if they can manage to win this round. They do have the auto sniper now on Sean, so that be m that might be what they need. And an off on schedule as well, so double sniper. Here. Absolutely, yeah. This is uh, the double sniper setup is very good uh, for for the uh, for cash actually. You can get a lot with your sniper on A as well, and that, I think that's where Sean Garris is playing. He's, pl yeah, he's playing from the uh, around the court area on A. They don't have anyone. Okay, they got one guy on B. Yes, good deal. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So he's he's doing the solo B, kind of the, the Neo on B. That's which is really powerful. If you've got a great AWPer on that spot, you just don't have to worry about it. If your AWPer's really good there, but they've actually they're moving a lot at the moment because they 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 have no middle control. They don't know what's going on at the moment. So you, you expect an information play, but that's hard with snipers. You can't really ma easily make an inf information play if you've got all the snipers. So they're gonna have to just they're just gonna have to react. And win the rounds here when the, when the play comes into his sight, and they are seeing the pressure coming in now. They might have, well, they have the initial two players here, but nothing can he, can he actually come out of future. He's been very good today. He needs a couple of frags here. Only gets the singles. Shroud gets a quick one by the box at the back of the bomb site. In comes the drone for the trade, and they're going to make it happen here. Three on three, but two sniper rifles here for Cloud Nine for this retake. And this is the plant you're talking about behind the little box. Open to checkers, but otherwise very safe. Sean Gares with the auto sniper. It looks like they're going to fall back with this, potentially. And if they get a fast frag, unless uh, you know they get a mistake from Team Liquid there, which is the peak, this mm. is a save from Cloud9. Yeah, 15 to 14. But uh, I'm, I'm curious, though, because what we saw was, despite because usually with the two sniper rifles, you see the 1 3 1, because you can hold down the picks with the sniper rifles, whereas the rifles is much less consistent in theory, like your percentage to. It's more gambly with with rifle versus rifle, and they can trade more easily than an AWP. It's like boom, one shot. If you connect it, they're dead. Um, and yeah, so exactly. and so, then you can afford to have the three players in mid and get the information. But that spot, like they have the rifle, the, the the snipers, but then they didn't play the mid pressures. They had no info as to where yeah. what was happening. They should have a, like th the three rifles in mid, the scar on A and the op on B. Yeah, they had that at the start of the round, but then they yeah. quickly just left mid. Um, I guess just afraid of a fast execute or something, which would be a good counterplay. But they haven't been showing that setup really much at all, so it would be weird for Liquid to go for a specific counterplay, it's a setup that's very rare as well. Just so, very passive play here from it, Liquid. It's all coming down to this. So, how many. That's been six rounds in a row now from Liquid in a spot where Cloud9 are on game point. They've got four bombs exploded. So, they've won four rounds in that way. Now this uh, this round we got uh, again this this, uh, this setup, but the the thing is they don't have again uh, super solid mid control. They've got Freaksoy just smoking it off. I feel like without with a lack of grenades, he's gonna fall might fall back. Just playing for the information here, but they can get pushed out of mid, and that's a problem. We saw that previous in the previous round being pushed out of mid was what gave the advantage for Liquid to execute into B. The wall of smoke coming out there in mid. This is nice from Liquids. So it's very nice indeed. All the smokes, as you say, and that forces Cloudline back from mid. Sean Gares is kind of there trying to put some pressure towards Vent, but again, it's ambiguous. They don't know what they're doing with it just yet, which forces them to play up from the sights. Sean Gares is a little bit paranoid of uh, the play from short, but also from 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 connector in mid. But the time, though, I think this might actually work out now for. Club nine. That's a good flash. Oh, the angle is found though, but Sean Gares coming in with the auto sniper takes down two players. But it's a two on three. Can Freakers get it done? No, he can't. Two on two now. Shroud and nothing on the rotate from the B bomb site. This is going to go down to the wire here. We have just enough time for the plant. And a leash and a Dren looking for something here. But their positioning is not perfect. Oh, wow. 
Shao gets a quick frag onto a leash. Oh, in Cloud9. They pull it out of the bag in the last round. I am completely in shock there. That round was nuts. It's absolutely crazy. Could have gone either way. But uh, that, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what to say about that cash game. It's, it's lots of crazy stuff going on. The inability for Cloud9 to just close it out there. And uh, I mean, do you feel like Liquid could have made that round easier for themselves? Do you think that they made some mistakes? How did you feel? I just, they played a like, uh, I was like cash, uh, perfect cash round, basically last year. You just take a chill, do the wall of smokes. Like the seat just can't know if you're going either like A or B. The only thing they did wrong is it uh, just took a bit too long mm -hmm. because when you only have 20 seconds left, the seat is basically no, uh, it's not going to be a fake because you, they have so little, now, so little time. They can't rotate back. So as soon as they saw the bomb towards A, they could just rotate everybody over right away. So Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that was close though. Cloud9, they, uh, what was, was that, like uh, six or seven in a row? Yeah. Um, when they were on match point from, from Liquid. So Liquid are uh, putting up a pretty pretty strong fight there. But Cloud9 actually going to take it. So th that's also, that's such an, a tight match. We got uh, the next match coming up. It's going to be Cloud9's choice as well, going into Dust2. But um, I have no idea again what's going to happen with these two teams. It's impossible to call it. Guys, we're going to take a quick break whilst we set up Dust2 for you guys. Cloud9 going in with a one map advantage. They could 2-0 it and take it home, but I've got a feeling Liquid has some tricks up their sleeves. We will find out after the break.